Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the topic how to select the lighting equipment. Yesterday uh, we have done uh, some problems related to the method of lighting. So um, today we'll be reading about uh, reading about how to select the lighting equipment. Okay. So this is a, a important topic. So let us see. Now here um, there are actually uh, this is a part of uh, seven key steps in lighting designing uh, lighting design process. Uh, which one is a part of the lighting designing process? How to select the lighting equipment and the, how to calculate the lighting parameters. These two are the part of the designing process of uh, lighting okay and the first uh, step is structured design process clear so to achieve the best overall uh, outcome uh, in a lighting installation uh, we should always remember that it's very important um, to avoid the uh, tendency of uh, rushing straight into uh, luminaire selection before determining more broadly what is required from the system. So what is uh, I'm trying to say here is um, it's very important uh, that uh, instead of uh, rushing uh, straight into uh, how, how do we select this particular luminaire selection. So uh, before uh, determining uh, more broadly what is actually required for the system that we should uh, know first. So. Um, if you try to use this particular structured design process in a proper way, then we can easily avoid this kind of uh, problems. Clear? So the key steps, the seven key steps, which particular design, uh, design process are, first you have to identify the requirement, then we have to determine what is the method of lighting, then select the lighting equipment. Select the lighting equipment. This is this. Number three and number four uh, are most important for us. Okay, identify the requirements already. We have, uh, I have given you some glimpse uh, regarding this. Then uh, the determining the method of lighting also. Um, from last two classes, we are studying this. Then uh, these two are very important by which we can end up this third module. So how to select the lighting equipment and how to calculate the lighting parameters and adjust the design as per required. And uh, fifth, uh, fifth step is determining the control system, then choice of a luminaire. Then uh, last step is inspection, inspecting the installation after completion. And if, if possible, uh, after these seven steps, after a few months uh, of this particular uh, completion of the seven steps, so, uh, we can also, you, you can also determine uh, what has worked and what has not worked after this particular designing project has completed. This is uh, the only way how you can build your experience to apply for the future designs. Now, the five initial stages, that is identifying the requirements, determining the method of lighting, select the lighting equipment, calculate the lighting parameters, and adjust the design as required, determine the control system. These five, these five initial stages are considered uh, in more detail in these particular coming stages, coming lecture. So the first, is identifying the requirements. Now, this uh, involves uh, actually uh, we should gain a particular uh, full understanding of what actually the lighting installation is intended to achieve. Now, after when when you actually install this particular lighting, okay. So, but uh, what actually you are intended to achieve, that is the most important thing. Yeah, that is the most important thing. So this involves what actually you are going to achieve. So after the installation of this particular light, 
now what actually you are going to achieve that is the most important thing now this includes what this includes uh, task requirements then uh, in task requirements that is how, how much illuminance you how much glare you require what is what is the mood of the space the working space or the uh, space where you uh, want to put this particular light what kind of mood is reflecting there then the relation to the shape to space then what are the things that has to be emphasized uh, then what are the things that you want to hide in the particular room and what should be the direction of uh, light and interaction of uh, daylight that means uh, how much uh, daylight you want to actually focus into that particular room so these are uh, the requirements these are the requirements so um, that means uh, what actually so after installation of this particular lights uh, what actually you want to achieve at by the end of the day that that is the first thing so you have to identify your requirements first based on your requirements let us go for the selecting of the perfect lighting in a particular commercial or maybe residential houses commercial houses or maybe in an industry okay so these are the things which you should take care of that is the task requirements illuminance glare then what should be the mood of space relation to shape of space things to be emphasized the things to hide the direction of light then interaction of daylight okay the next is uh determining the method of lighting determining the method of lighting now this uh, actually uh, we have studied in the previous uh, uh, lectures so at this particular stage uh, how actually the light is to be delivered that means uh, for ex example will it be recessed or will it be surface mounted or will it be direct or indirect light or will it be uh, uh, lighting be used and its primary characteristics will it be prismatic or uh, uh, will the light uh, will the brightness be low or uh, will it be uh, in the higher side of the brightness we are we going to consider then consideration uh, actually should be given at this stage uh, the maximum usage of the particular daylight so to minimize the uh, the need of artificial light so we uh, if you want to minimize the need of artificial light the best way is to maximize the use of the particular daylight that is the most important thing okay so uh, before uh, going further so i would uh, uh, request you to just watch a particular video uh, by which it will be very much useful uh, for you In this nugget, we will learn about the basic lighting calculations that are required to carry out a lighting design. A lighting design helps us identify the most appropriate lighting levels for different environments. A number of factors should be kept in mind while creating a lighting design, such as luminous flux, luminous intensity, illuminance and luminance, color rendering, color temperature, and glare. Luminous flux is the total quantity of light emitted per second by a light source. The unit is lumen. Luminous intensity is the quantity of light emitted per second in a specific direction. The unit is candela. Illuminance is the quantity of light or luminous flux falling on a unit area of a surface. The illuminance is independent of the direction from which the luminous flux reaches the surface. The unit is lux. Luminance is a measure of the quantity of light traveling in a given direction. It describes the amount of light that passes through or is emitted from a particular area. The unit of luminance is candela per square meter. Color rendering is based on how well the eight standard colors are reproduced by a light source 
compared to how they are seen in daylight. The scale of color rendering is 0 to 100. Color temperature is a method of describing the color characteristics of light, usually either warm, yellowish, or cool, bluish. It is measured in degrees of Kelvin. Cooler colors are associated with freshness and vitality, while warmer colors are more restful and social. Glare is a visual sensation caused by excessive and uncontrolled brightness. Glare from a lighting installation is always negative. It can either cause discomfort, leading to headaches and eye strain, or it can reduce our ability to see. As we get older, our eye ages and the lens lets less light through. So we need more light to see the same task as we did when we were younger. Veiling glare is stray light in lenses and optical systems caused by reflections between surfaces of lens elements and the inside barrel of the lens. Let us now focus on the key concepts that are required to undertake a lighting design using Dialux Light Wizard. The first and foremost requirement for a lighting design is defining a working plane. Whether it is an office area, car park, or an industrial warehouse, the working plane needs to be defined. The working plane is situated at the nominal working height in an interior space. Let us now understand the factors that help in the calculation of direct and interreflected light. The calculations for both the outdoor and indoor lighting design would differ. For an indoor design, the calculations are done for both the direct and interreflected light. However, for an outdoor design, the calculations are done based on the assumption that the light falls directly on the working plane. Also, the lighting level would be calculated according to different reflectance levels, as these would vary from scheme to scheme. The reflectances of different surfaces have an impact on the calculated lighting level. For example, if the room surface is black, reflectance will be zero. For a room with white walls, the reflectance will be 100% and will vary equally when all the surfaces have been changed to white. The numbers are just typical and will vary from scheme to scheme, but you can see how much reflectance influences the final lighting level. Another factor that impacts the calculations for the lighting design is the room geometry. Two rooms with the same reflectance levels, but with different shapes, can produce different calculated results. Next, we will learn about the maintenance factor, which makes a significant difference to the calculated re results. This factor is used to determine the depreciation of a lamp or a reflective surface over a period of time. Let us now learn about the concept of grid. The grid is placed on the working plane 0.5 meter away from the walls and is used to calculate the average and uniformity of the light. When reading letters, we need a higher lighting level to see the smaller letters. As the lighting level increases, the background to the letters gets brighter, thereby increasing the contrast between the letter and its background. The better the contrast, the easier it is to see. We use a Guneo photometer to determine how much light comes out in each direction from a luminaire. For lighting calculations, we should also know about the photometric properties of the product to be used. The first such property is the lumen output of the lamp or LED luminaire, and the second is the amount of light coming out in each direction from a luminaire. Finally, we need to define how much light we need for different environments. The lighting level depends on a number of factors and is mainly task-related. The harder the task, the more light we need. The available lighting guides help us find out the recommended lighting levels. As a whole, lighting design is partly a mathematical process and partly a series of assumptions based on the needs of the user. So there are many possible solutions, all of which can be correct. Thank you for watching. Okay, I hope you have seen the video and uh, <clears throat>
now let us see uh, coming to the next point uh, the the video that you have seen it is actually taken from a particular source youtube uh, it has taken it is taken from a youtube source uh, from the uh, actually a channel which is known as a signi signify okay so um, this particular uh, um, thing which actually i want to uh, share it uh, with you is the next uh, thing is your uh, selection of the lighting equipment when we talk about this particular selection of lighting equipment the things which we should uh, take care is once uh, uh, which method of lighting uh, you are going to uh, use if that has been selected then the most appropriate light source it can only be chosen followed by luminaire okay so um, uh, the following uh, the following attributes which should be studied uh, when you are choosing the light source are um, light output that is in lumens what should be the output of the light then um, total un input uh, uh, in uh, watts then efficacy that is uh, lumens per watt then uh, what is the lifetime uh, of that particular light source then uh, the physical size then uh, what is the surface uh, brightness and uh, glare mm, then color characteristics electrical characteristics then requirement for the control gear compatibility with existing electrical system then suitability uh, for the operating environment so mm, these these are the following attributes which should be studied whenever you are going for this particular choosing the light source so before uh, whenever you are going for this particular selection the lighting equipment okay so whatever that has been uh, studied as in the form of attributes clear so these things you should take care so whenever you are choosing or whenever you are selecting the lighting equipment so light output the light what is this light output light output is actually lumens so in simple terms we actually denote these lumens uh, with a symbol lm okay with a symbol small l the first letter and the third alphabet lm okay so lm is actually it is denoted by lm lumens now what is actually lumen or what is light output this is uh the you can say the measurement of the total amount of visible light to the human eye okay so how much amount of light is actually visible to the human eye uh, which is coming from a uh, light source it uh, light source or it can be from a lamp so higher the lumen so you can say that higher is the lumen uh rating uh, higher is the lumen rating the brighter the lamp will appear that means the lumen rating if it is higher brighter will be the lamp which will appear to your human eye okay so this is your uh, lumen uh, or the light output which you are talking about or this is the first attribute which you should take care while you are choosing for this particular light source then comes here the second is the total input wattage okay so what is the total input wattage now we are talking about the total input power uh, that is being consumed by a particular system clear then how do we actually calculate this particular input wattage input wattage or input watt clear so uh, basically uh, most of you uh, maybe the this particular concept maybe in first year you might have uh, learned how actually these watts are calculated there are actually uh, three ways to calculate watt most of you uh, know it then uh, here the number of watts actually is nothing but it is equal to what uh, amperes multiplied by volt okay so in other words you can say what is ampere volt clear so the formula is actually what is equal to ampere into voltage for example let me say you if the 
there is a current of 3 amperes and uh, there is a voltage of 110 volt so current is 3 amperes voltage is 110 volt so multiply this current of 3 amperes into 110 volts so that is comes around 330 watts so what is is 330 watts clear so p stands for actually you can say the what is is nothing but we can say it is a power source the watt of power source clear so sometimes these total input watt is also called as total you can also name it as a total input volt amp and okay so this this is the second thing which you should uh, uh, look into that is how much is the total input watt what is okay or what is is nothing but ampere into voltage the next is the third one is your efficacy what is this efficacy efficacy is uh, lumens per watt clear yeah. so here we do have in uh, english uh, dictionary also actually uh, we do have the meaning of efficacy that is the ability to produce a desired result or intended uh, result okay now efficacy in this particular uh, topic when we talk about we are talking about luminous efficacy so luminous efficacy is actually uh, the measurement of Uh, how well a particular light source is producing a visible light is this clear so how much uh, it is uh, efficacy is how many lumens per watt na it is given in uh, actually bracket lumens per watt so from there itself you can actually uh, get the definition of what is efficacy efficacy is the this efficacy is the measurement of how well a light source is produced produced uh, produces a visible light now you can say it is the ratio of luminous flux to power okay luminous flux uh, luminous flux unit is lumens and power unit is watt clear so the ratio of luminous flux to power is known as efficacy and it is the si unit lumens per watt is the si unit clear yes. so what did i say what is efficacy efficacy is uh, the measurement of how much amount of uh, useful light how much amount of useful light clear yes, uh, is produced uh, and per unit of electricity clear yes, per unit of electricity what is the amount of useful light that is produced clear yes. in the form of visible light so that is called as efficacy okay so this actually is calculated by taking the total lumens released from that particular fixture by taking the total what is consumed by that particular light fixture so this is calculated how would this is calculated by taking total lumens released from the fixture by the total what is consumed by the light fixture okay so this is the third efficacy which we next is we are uh, the next uh, attribute is the lifetime okay so lifetime uh, is uh, we, we are actually talking about the lifetime of that particular uh, light uh, lighting equipment we are talking about the lifetime attribute also we have to take into consideration okay lifetime uh, equipment so lifetime of electrical equipment that means here how long actually uh, the uh, equipment will last okay so um, probably uh, here we always uh, uh, expect that uh, the lifetime should uh, of that electrical equipment should be more and more okay then we will also consider about the size of that particular uh, lighting equipment physical size then um, surface bright brightness surface brightness then the glare these things already uh, we have actually uh, studied clear yeah. so glare is actually what uh, sorry brightness is uh, actually what we have studied 
Now, before that, glare in electricity. So, glare is actually uh, the sensation that is uh, produced uh, within the visual field. Okay. And uh, now, here, uh, which are sufficiently greater and uh, than the luminance to which the eyes are adapted. Okay. So, this particular glare actually it is the loss of visual performance or uh, the discomfort that is produced by the intensity of light uh, on your eyes okay then we will also look look into the color color characteristics then electrical characteristics requirement for control gear uh, then uh, compatibility with the existing electrical system then the suitability for the operating environment these are the attributes which you should consider when choosing the light source then there are other number of factors also which is actually affecting uh, this luminaire choice affecting the luminaire choice okay so uh, maybe what is actually luminaire it is uh, the meaning of luminaire is a, here a complete electric light unit in, uh, in in a technical context when we talk about what is the luminaire it is a complete electric light unit is called as luminaire okay so here we have a particular handbook ies lighting handbook is there and in 2014 national electrical code okay article 100 so it, that article uh, electrical code article 100 which is also generally called as the 2004 NEC. So it defines actually a luminaire as a complete lighting unit consists of a lamp or lamps together with the parts designed to distribute the light to position and protect the lamps and to connect the lamps, lamps to the power supply. Okay. So again, I'm repeating it according to IES Lightning Handbook and the 2014 National Electrical Code, Article 100. It luminaire, luminaire is actually defined as a complete lighting unit consisting of a lamp or lamps together with the parts designed to distribute the light to position and protect the lamps and to connect the lamps to the power supply so the total so what we are talking about we are talking about the total electric light unit taking as a unit okay so we are talking about the lamp the lamps uh, or it can be a single lamp or it can be more than uh, one lamp so th they are totally designed to distribute a light and we are positioning all those lamps in which position it should be, how the lamps should be protect, protected and how these lamps should be connected to a particular power. Okay. So the, the, okay, so this is called as your luminous charge. So these are number of factors which you should consider. The first factor is uh, the characteristics of light source and uh, uh, control gear uh, from where actually uh, the source, uh, uh, the light source is coming. Then the luminaire efficiency, that is percentage of lamp light output transmitted out of that particular picture. Then the light distribution, then the glare control, finish and appearance, size, accessibility of components for maintenance, ability to handle adverse operating conditions, and then aesthetic looks, good looking, then thermal management. So these, these are all the factors which are actually affecting this particular uh, luminaire, luminaire uh, choice. Okay. So, when we talk about these factors which are affecting uh, luminaire, yes. Yeah. So we we are actually uh, we can also say that in a simple way the factors which are affecting this luminaire and the choice of luminaire is. Uh, you, you can also say the uh, uh, the lighting scheme that should be such that it may uh, provide illumination uh, level also you can say so this is the most vital factor because a sufficient uh, illumination is the basic means whereas we are able to see our surroundings unless they are themselves light sources 
since only when illuminated do the objects take the necessary brightness okay so that is it is the task of the illumination to give the objects a distributed brightness now the uh, second the second factor is uniformity of illumination now the human eye is adjusting itself it it, it adjusts itself automatically to the brightness within the field of vision now if there is a lack of uniformity what will happen is our eyes uh, pupil or iris of that particular eye they are adjusting okay if the brightness of uh, the particular object or the brightness of the light is more the ultimately what will happen suddenly if your brightness is more suddenly your uh, eyes or eyes that is pupil of your eye is actually contracting okay or it adjusts more frequently clear so normally it causes fatigue but that uniformity of illumination also we should take care the the third factor is the color of light okay the color of light also we should take care then uh, then shadows uh, then we can take about the glare control it can be direct or it can be reflected so sometimes glare it, it can come directly from the light source or it may be reflected brightness such as from a desktop okay or the nickel machine part or calendar paper so what i'm talking about when a light is you you, you might have played when uh, during your childhood or maybe now also you might be playing uh, the light uh, when it is falling on your stainless steel watch if your watch is stainless steel so that particular glare of that particular uh, the light is reflected back or not so directly from that light source uh, it can be from the light source or it can be from the reflected brightness okay so it can be from your watch if it is stainless steel when the light is falling on the watch the uh, so it be, it reflects back so that is called glare so direct glare from uh, direct direct glare means it is from the source of light and it's a more common and it is more often a uh, it's kind of uh, uh, difficulty or a hindrance hindrance means a blockage to your vision okay now once uh, very simple example in case of glare is uh, you directly if you take a glance if you take a look at the sun uh, a bright light source and when you directly look to the sun uh, suddenly it causes some kind of discomfort it causes some kind of discomfort on to your eyes okay so the light sources uh, of far less brilliancy than the sun such as um, filament of an incandescent lamp you take a 100 watt bulb and directly uh you look into that 100 watt bulb so it some kind of discomfort will be there so these are called as direct glares okay so uh, indirect glares are those kind of uh, brightness uh, uh, where that particular brightness is actually it's coming from a, uh, a reflect a reflection from a metallic objects reflection from a table top reflection from a uh, from a particular uh, what you can say stainless steel uh, reflected object so for example reflected glare actually um, it comes from it does not come directly so it comes from uh, reflection of the light light source from uh, some polished surface that is called indirect glare or you can also say as a reflected glare now one more factor also <clears throat> through which this luminaire is affecting uh, that is called as uh, mounting height so mounting height is also there what is mounting height is actually what type of building is there and what type of lighting scheme should be employed uh, in case of direct lighting uh, in rooms of large floor area the luminaire should be mounted as close as to the ceiling as possible okay uh, are you understanding if it is a large floor area so the luminaire uh, or the lighting should be in such a way that um, th that particular lighting should be as close as to the ceiling as possible 
okay it should not be far away from the ceiling so these, these are certain aspects which you should take care of then uh, spacing of luminaires so what should be the space uh, between the lights that you are actually um, selecting it and you are designing it the correct spacing is actually of great importance if you want to provide uniform illumination over the whole area of the room comparatively uh, in case of dark areas which are often so often found when the fittings are badly spaced now if the proper correct spacing between the lights is not properly maintained you can see that sometimes practically you might have seen also some part of the room is dark and some uh, most of the part of the room is in dark so should be taken care of clear so these are these are these are the things which i should uh, uh, about this particular how to select the lighting equipment okay so i hope you have understood this particular topic okay so